Well, hello, everybody. He is me, Feist. How's it going? We have an amazing NFL algorithm video for you today. Everybody gets to file for free this week because people have been so nice when it comes to NFL that even though we didn't have a great week last week, people still compensated me for my time and respect the work that I did here, and I really appreciate it. So everybody gets it for free, and we're going to talk about the whole week right now. Also, something else I've got to say. I crowdsource the assistants to help um, categorize which team every player is on. And it looks good, and, and it happened right away, and people made extra detail to it. Fantastic. Whoever you anonymous hippos are or whatever it says on Google Sheets when you're an anonymous person, thank you. You're doing, uh, you're doing the yeoman's work or lord's work or whatever that is. So, um, so I think our, our players are good. I did something else, which is fascinating, and that's why I want to talk about it in this video, which is not only do we have projected scores like we normally do for this week, but we have an alternate projection that takes into account a defensive injury factor for each team, which is, a, I believe, a better number than I had last week because what I'm doing now is I am targeting the, the ranking of the defensive players on impactful st statistics, meaning sacks, forced fumbles, interceptions, TDs, pass defense rating, these things that are... I would say a better um, categorization of those that are really impactful players. You know, who's the most impactful player when you do it this way? TJ Watt on Pittsburgh. I like when I saw that because uh, it just is interesting. Trayvon Diggs on Dallas, right? So when you do it this way, what you get is you get uh, a very interesting look at who's injured. Like there's a lot of impactful players injured on, on Indianapolis and on Tennessee, which makes for some really, really interesting alternate scores. So let's – Get into every game this week. Let's first start off with Thursday because that is starting off the week. And we have the Ravens against Miami. It likes the Ravens 27-14 but only 22-14 by the alternate defensive score because the Miami's defense, however good the Miami's defense is, is not very injured and the Ravens are at about 16%. So they have to cover seven and a half. You see that with the alternate score, they actually barely cover, barely, literally, barely seven and a half. Um, but it looks like they would cover more. So interesting look at that game. The line's kind of unbettable. Uh, the over-under set at 46. Miami's defense might, might, might slow down uh, Lamar a little bit if they're healthy. That puts us at a f uh, third... 36 point game really low right so even already we were predicting the under so, th so that's an interesting pick for thursday night now we'll talk about the rest of the week and we'll talk about the order so it has the chargers over the vikings by 17 um really likes the chargers even the adjusted score has them by 16 because uh minnesota's defense is not all that healthy apparently and neither is the chargers but Shows a high-scoring game. The over/under set at 53, so it's kind of too high to bet anyway. But the Chargers are only minus 158, and they're at the top of this list. And their win score is not that great, so that's why the odds makers are giving them not all that much credit. And it seems like there's a ton of value here at taking the Chargers on a big round robin or parlay to win this game. That's number one. Dallas and Atlanta. Atlanta bad team. Dallas trying to look come off the schneid against Denver. The adjusted score is very similar to the projected score, so the Ds are probably not much of a factor. Tough, tough minus 400 line, though, and eight points. So um, I, I do think Dallas will try to run it up on them, but Atlanta just came off a win, and this line's unbettable. So in, in many ways, I feel like I've taken Dallas off there. But we're, we're just going to leave all the teams on here and just go one by one. Tampa Bay coming off a bye against Washington. Even the adjusted score is still having them win by 12. They have to cover 9.5. Brady probably does it against Washington, but that's a terrible line, so I'd say unbettable game. Baltimore and Miami's Thursday night. Buffalo and the Jets. Buffalo shouldn't blow another game. They, again, have to cover ridiculous points. Looks like an unbettable game. Says that they almost exactly cover 11.5 with the adjusted score. Unbettable game. Chiefs and Raiders. Are the Raiders – take a look at the moon to see how the Raiders are feeling today. Um, Chiefs desperate – I would say desperate actually for a win. Are only minus 140. The adjusted score is even better than the projected score. I like to see that. That makes you think you can add the Chiefs on a round robin to win. Rams and Niners. Rams by six. Adjusted score Rams by more. 
Uh, I think the, the Niners are a crappy team. That's only minus 180. We can take the Rams. Yeah, I said take, stay away from the Rams last week. And this week I'm saying take them. They're higher up on this list. That line's reasonable for a round robin to win. Can't take a minus three and a half because it's more than a field goal, though. Patriots and Browns. Patriots playing better ball. Adjusted score has it a closer game. Notice that. And we're further down on this list. So even though the Patriots are at home, we've got our new rosters with Cleveland. They have a negative win score, too. This is an unbettable game right here. If anything, you got an underdog line for Cleveland you could think about. But it's this is why you stay away from a game like this. Indianapolis and Jacksonville, this is where the fascinating flip is when it comes to the alternate scoring because Jacksonville's D is healthy. They just beat Buffalo and held them to just field goals. And then uh, the Indianapolis defense right here is 46% injured and impactful players. That, seeing a minus 470, makes you take Jacksonville. Normally I'd say you don't bet on bad teams, but there are reasons to bet on this bad team plus 10 points. You probably clear that by the full 10 points. Jacksonville might even upset this game. It's an interesting straight bet on Jacksonville on the money line, which we can look at when we can finish the list. Tennessee and New Orleans. New Orleans has no quarterback. I wouldn't trust them. I like that it favors Tennessee, but the adjusted score doesn't favor Tennessee because Tennessee's defense is now hurting at 44%, and New Orleans not so much. Trouble game there. I'd say stay away because there's too much conflicting information. Pittsburgh and Detroit. How on earth is this a one-point game? That's the funniest thing I've ever seen. So you can't take – If anything, I'm not telling you to take Detroit plus eight. The algorithm sort of is telling you that. I would never tell you to take Detroit. I'll say unbettable game because that's minus 335. We'll let it go. Packers and Seahawks. Russell Wilson may be back. What does it say about that in the projection pivot? Let's take a look. Seattle. Russell Wilson. Oh, there's something else I want to do. This reminds me. He is not here yet. So – who are our questionable players, and where are they impactful? Just so we know, Dallas has some questionable guys: C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper. Um, Sam, the Niners have some questionable guys: Debo Samuel, Elijah Mitchell. Tampa Bay has some questionable guys with Antonio Brown questionable and Gronk. Um, Arizona, what's the Kyler, Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins still on here, right? So we've got to watch out for that because. Uh, when we look at the big list. We need to do that, uh, as noted by last week. So let's get back to Green Bay Seattle. Russell Wilson, I don't know what the situation is. Makes it an unbettable game, in my opinion, if we don't know if he's playing. Denver and Philadelphia, tie game. Uh, alternate score favors Philly. I believe that. And Philly's an underdog. So Philly plus two. You got to get him plus three is the play, I think. Or Philly to win, but maybe not on a round robin because it's a very deep, low game. Now, those are the 14 games, correct? There's only 13 games. No, I thought there's 14 games. There's 14 games. What are we missing? Uh-oh. ruh -roh. Um, Carolina and Arizona is missing. Why? Why are you missing? Um, let's see if it pops up when we do this. I don't see Carolina anywhere in here, right? Well, let's look at the cube real quick and find out what happened. Carolina is right here. What's going on? What's the problem? Let's look again. Um, am I seeing it and just not seeing it? There it is. It's down here. Where's Arizona? Did I skip over it? Or is Arizona not showing up for another reason? This is weird. Arizona, sorry we're doing this in the middle of the video, guys, but this is how we troubleshoot. Arizona is where? It's right there against Carolina, but, they, but their winning pick is not showing. That's weird. So do we only have them in here once? The answer is yes. So we missed something. So what happened is, is in the season pivot, I, I missed them at the top. <laughs> da -da, that's what happened. Let's put them back. So let's put them in, in here, right here. This is how you do this. This is how you add to the cube. There are some formulas that are, oops, that's not where it goes. It goes right here. There are formulas that you have to pull down, like this one, and these ones for projected score. 
And now when we refresh, we'll have it. Voila, it's there. And let's then open this up. This is greater than the projected score, projected margin of victory at the bottom is greater than zero. And now we have just our games and Arizona's right there against Carolina. Of course, Arizona should be Carolina. I don't think cares. Even the, even a ankle ridden Kyler Murray or, or Colt McCoy, whoever it is, beats Carolina right now. And the odds makers agree, but the line doesn't. The alternate score says 23-21 Carolina. So unbettable game is what we learned. Okay. Um, there'll be an update Sunday with injury reports and stuff. But if you had to make picks right now, the picks were pretty easy, right? They were not to take Dallas because the line was terrible. They were not to take Tampa Bay because the line was terrible. And also Tampa Bay's defense has some issues. It was to take the under and I will leave Baltimore up there as a winner in that game at minus 335, but whatever. Buffalo and the Jets can't bet it. Kansas City was a yes. The Rams were a yes. The Patriots were a no and maybe even the Browns. The Colts were a no and maybe even the Jaguar, Jaguars. Arizona is a no because the line is terrible and there's injuries. Uh, Tennessee New Orleans was a no because we had question marks with a bunch of stuff. Steelers over Lions is good. They're going to win this game for sure. So you can leave it on there as a round robin minus 335. This game, there was question marks, Green Bay, and it was Philly plus three or Philly to win there. So not Denver. So there's about, what is that, six, seven? Six picks in there that are very reasonable. What's the Monday night game? The Rams game. So the other five are on Sunday. Four on Sunday and one on Thursday. All right, so that is the update. Everyone download the file. Have fun. Thanks for contributing. Um, the reason why I haven't done college basketball is because nobody paid for it, so I just didn't even do it today. Um, actually, it's not true. I did it. I have it for myself, but I didn't do a video on it. So I will do a recap video on it. We'll see if anybody wants to pay me going forward. Um, all right, guys. Good luck, everyone. If you do one thing this weekend, it's watch Kirk Cousins lose to the Chargers at only minus 158. And you can even consider taking the spread because apparently Chargers D's hurting enough that this is supposed to be over a two-touchdown game. All right. Good luck. May all your picks be winning.